For starters, my, 28 female, wife, 25 female, and I are both in the military, and we have no children currently. We are thinking of starting a family in the next two years. Being service members usually comes with a lot of benefits, including VA loans. To backtrack a little bit, I don't have a relationship with my mother whatsoever. She's a narcissist who only used me for my money and credit growing up, and I've been no contact with her for about two years now. My wife and I are newlyweds, and she's quite close to her mother and five sisters. Her father passed several years ago. She is the second to youngest of the six sisters. It's quite intense at times, having to deal with so much female energy, and it always feels like they're fighting each other. However, since their father passed, they stick together and try to help each other along as best they can, within reason of course. A couple of months ago, my mother-in-law, 51 female, asked my wife if she would co-sign a mortgage so she wouldn't lose a house she owns in California. My mother-in-law lives abroad and she only comes to the States once a year at most. Since my wife and I are married, this would mean we'd use our one chance at the VA loan by giving it to my mother-in-law. I was not comfortable with this from the very beginning. My mother stopped talking to me after I didn't give her these very same benefits, and I wasn't about to be a hypocrite and give it to her mother. This was my wife's first time saying no, and her family did not take it lightly. They even blamed me for influencing her decision. She tried to explain that we are a couple now, and we're trying to start our own family soon. We want children, and we've worked very hard to secure our benefits, which I 100% believe we should enjoy. However, they believe that since she's the younger sister, she has no right to deny them, much less provide reasoning for saying no. This is considered talking back and is disrespectful. Her mother basically played the victim and turned three of her elder daughters against my wife. Anyway, the sisters all dogpiled on top of her and gave her hell for being a disobedient child. A couple of weeks later, one of the other elder sisters reached out to her and basically asked for the same thing to co-sign a VA loan on a house she wanted for her family. She said it was a different request than her mother's because mommy is different, she's unreasonable sometimes. Again, my wife said no and was in disbelief that she was going through this again. At this point, the entire family has ignored her phone calls and attempts at reaching out to put out this fire. At first, she felt very guilty for saying no, but after speaking with her therapist, she realized that she has a right to say no and not to be attacked for it. I also understand the dynamics in large families. I myself am the eldest of four, so I can relate to the expectations that we have for our younger siblings. I was able to recognize my mother's narcissism though, so I'm careful not to repeat the same mistakes with them. I feel so bad for my wife, and I'm not sure what to do. Part of me feels guilty and thinks she should have said yes just to avoid the whole fight. But I also think we've worked so hard in the army and eaten a lot of crap, and we should be able to enjoy our lives after all of this is done. Should she reach out again? Should she take a step back and let it die down? She says she doesn't care and they're going to lose her, but I know she doesn't really believe that. It's killing her to be the scapegoat right now, and it's killing me to watch her suffering. Never cosign. Never cosign. Never ever cosign. VA benefits aside, that loan becomes your responsibility, and the fact that these people can't get a loan on their own demonstrates that they don't have the credit responsibility to pay it down. Not only would you lose your VA loan benefit for a house you wouldn't live in, but they could cripple your credit score. You guys absolutely did the right thing. Your wife's family sounds just as toxic as yours. Just that she hasn't drawn any boundaries with them yet, so they haven't had the chance to show their true colors. What kinds of awful people cut off family members because they won't co-sign a mortgage? What kinds of awful people expect you to give up your own shot at a mortgage and give it to them? I'm glad your wife is in therapy. This is probably going to escalate, so just make sure she has as much support as possible. Reinforce that you guys made the right decision and help her as she grieves the fact that her family is full of crap people. Sister-in-law is a Bible-thumping bigot. I'm not sure why my brother married her, but I'm assuming he feels obligated to stay with her now, given that they have a daughter together. My niece isn't your typical girly girl. Not that there's anything wrong with being one. 
In any case, she's big into typical guy-like activities like sports, wrestling, and RC toys. My brother is okay with letting his daughter take part in all of that. He has her enrolled in basketball, and I believe she's going to take up ice hockey pretty soon too. Sister-in-law hates it. She's very old school. She's always forcing their daughter into wearing dresses and glittery stuff. My niece can't stand it. Most of the time she complains that the dresses are itchy because she knows that's the only way her mother will listen to her and let her change into comfortable clothes. Seriously, what's the point of forcing your kid into glittery dresses for a casual family dinner on a Thursday night? Anyway, sister-in-law and I don't get along that well. I'm a tattoo artist and I don't subscribe to any particular religion. So naturally she thinks I'm a bad influence and a horrible person, even though I've only ever been nice to her. I follow the law. I pay my bills on time. I have a degree from one of the most prestigious universities in the country, and I don't drink or smoke or do anything even remotely bad. Regardless, I have experience dealing with willfully ignorant, close-minded people like her. So I don't normally care when she goes on one of her rants. But last night, she crossed the line. We were having dinner at my parents' house, and my niece asked if she could play with my RC helicopter. I said yes. Sister-in-law intervened and said no. Understandably upset, my niece got a little pouty. She had tears in her eyes and refused to take another bite of dinner. I bit my tongue and stayed quiet the rest of dinner. Then, afterwards, I carried everyone's plates into the kitchen to wash them while the others were in the living room socializing. My niece found me and asked me if she could play with my RC helicopter in a really quiet voice. Probably so sister-in-law wouldn't overhear. I wanted really badly to say yes, but I didn't want to disobey her parents' wishes. So I told her maybe next time. She got a little upset again, but she didn't cry. Her face fell with genuine disappointment. I felt really bad, so I knelt down with her at eye level, and I promised I would let her test out my RC helicopter on Christmas. For a second, she seemed happy again, but then she told me her mother said, toy helicopters and cars are for boys only. To which I replied, that's not true. Sister-in-law walked in right then, yanked her daughter away, and promptly slapped me across the face. Everyone else was in the living room. The only one who saw it was my niece. Frightened and confused, she immediately started to cry. My brother and parents rushed into the kitchen after and asked what happened. Sister-in-law demanded they leave. My brother stared at me as if asking, what did she do this time? But I didn't say anything. A few minutes later, sister-in-law was gone, waiting in the car while my mother took my niece into a different room to console her. I didn't want to freak my niece out even more, so I waited until she was out of the kitchen before explaining what happened to my brother and our dad. My dad believed me, but my brother didn't say a word. He listened to what I had to say, and then he just took my niece and left. Our parents think he's in shock and need some time to process what his wife did. It's not so much the fact that she hit me over something so minuscule. It's more that she hit me in front of their five-year-old daughter. I'm not going to sue her for assault. One, because there's no proof apart from mine and my niece's word. And two, because that just sounds like a lot of unnecessary drama. That said, I'm worried for my niece. If her mother can hit me over some dumb crap like that, I'm worried she may be doing the same thing to my niece. It's a stretch, but a valid one in my opinion, especially considering the fact that they don't really get along. What should I do? I could take this to court, but I doubt anything good will come from that. I figure I should start by having a serious talk with my brother. What should I say? It would be wise to move to get this taken into account with the police. If your brother decides to go for full custody, having this on record would be really helpful in helping him obtain that. I would definitely talk to your brother about the concerns. You in no way did anything wrong and even respected her wishes. She sounds like she has issues. Maybe hold off any legal type stuff until you've had a talk with your brother and see how he thinks it's best to handle the situation. Granted, if he's willing to let it go, then I'd definitely say step up and make everyone more aware of how awful that woman is. I've never been the biggest fan of my brother's wife because no matter how hard I tried, she did everything in her power to make me feel about three inches tall. 
Basically, she expects me to treat her far better than she is willing to treat me, and she is often flat-out unkind to me. She is one of those people who will serve you a bowl of kale and demand you eat it, but refuse to sit down and eat even one bite. For example, she thinks it is a joke to make fun of a physical characteristic I don't like, my tummy pooch. I'm otherwise quite skinny, but have this one problem area, and she expects me to laugh it off. It is hypocritical, since she is overweight, and one day I said, how would you feel if I gave you a nickname about you being very overweight and used it all the time? She absolutely lost it and said I was picking on her and started a big argument when all I did was try to explain why I hate it and why she wouldn't like it. She always makes fun of me for being a nerd. I'm nearly done with my PhD. And when one day I said, you don't see me calling you the dropout, do you? She once again lost it. Some of it is for the tiniest ducking crap. Like, she expects me to like every single picture she posts on Instagram, but she doesn't ever like mine. To be clear, I don't give a ducking crap if she likes my pictures or not. I'd rather not feel obligated to have her added at all, but I'm just using it as an example. Her and my brother expect me to buy them a card and a gift for her birthday, but I never get. Again, I don't care about getting gifts, just examples of their double standards. She'll post an unflattering picture of me on Facebook, like when my parents insist on taking a pic of me and my brother and her, where I've blinked or something. So when I decided to do the same, I was bombarded with A messages to delete it and how dare I embarrass someone who is family. My brother expects me to do her any favor she wants, but she'd never do a single thing for me. I get told off for not treating her like family when I refuse to lend her things after pointing out several belongings I lent to her that I never saw again because she lost. I go to their house with my parents for dinner. I only went for my parents' sake because they asked. And she insists on showing me the name bobble decoration she has. Her, my brother, their twins, both sets of parents, her two brothers, but not me. I'm expected to compliment her on them when we all know she showed them to me to hurt my feelings. When I don't fawn over them and simply leave the room, she starts making fun of me for being jealous they are married. What the duck? Made fun of for that, and to make it worse, she posts all this crap on Facebook. She'll post on Facebook that I am jealous and embarrass me in front of extended family. If I tell her to stop calling me a nickname, she posts passive-aggressive anti-sister-in-law posts. I'm sick of people judging me based on her posts because she makes her drama public. Basically, they ducking suck. She's a crappy person, and my brother is a complete enabler. I don't know what to do. I've reluctantly accepted she is part of the family, but I don't see why that means I should have to tolerate her double standards and the way she treats me. I'm frustrated with my brother's enabling of her behavior, and quite frankly, feel betrayed that he has never once called her out. They had twins a few months ago, and now my parents are even more expecting me to just take it to keep the peace, because we have seen her do it with a lot of her and my brother's friends. They cut off anyone who doesn't worship her good enough. I am so sick of the disrespect, and she's basically made my family life hell. What the hell can I do other than basically praying my brother one day wakes up and divorces her? Which is unlikely. He makes three sappy posts a day about how much he loves her, and how happy they are, and ugh, gag. Just to be clear. I do care about my nephews. It's not their fault they have such a crappy mom. But I just want her to ducking stop her crap. So my son married someone exactly like your sister-in-law. My daughter once said she expects me to treat her like she's Beyonce while she treats me like I'm not good enough to clean her toilet. And it was pretty spot on for how my daughter-in-law treats her and how she expects my daughter-in-law to treat her. Unfortunately, people like your sister-in-law and my daughter-in-law are just raging ducking narcissists who make themselves feel good by demanding adulation from people they simultaneously tear down. Sadly, they use their kids to get away with this behavior because they know people care about their grandkids, nieces, nephews, and their scapegoats are more likely to keep their mouths shut if there are children involved. I wish I had better advice, but some people are just awful. So, my best friend of 10 years has issues with her stepdaughters, 5 female, mother, 23 female. And it's really affecting our friendship, 
and I'm at a loss of what to do. My friend Ella married her husband two years ago, which made her officially the stepmom of Ava, but she's known her since she was two. Over the last few years, Ella's obsession with Ava's mom, Jordan, who has full custody, has really become unhealthy and is starting to really affect her life and our friendship. I've met Jordan multiple times. She's always been nice. I've seen texts to and from each party, and they're always kind. Jordan does what she can to give them as much time with Ava as possible. The kid is always well-mannered, happy, well taken care of, goes to a private school, and is a truly smart kid. She's in soccer, dance, and swim. Despite all of this, Ella is absolutely convinced her and her husband 100% deserve full custody, and she's obsessed with it. She nitpicks everything Jordan does. Some of it is hypocritical. She says Jordan allows her to eat junk food and goes on about how unhealthy it is, but then takes her for a Taco Bell herself the next day. The school she's in is pricey, but the public school alternative isn't good enough. She is constantly saying how Jordan can never give Ava what she deserves. Today, she ran it on the phone for an hour about how Ava said, oh my gosh, on the phone and was appalled that Jordan would allow her to talk like that. I could go on for days with examples. It's all she talks about. In the past, I've tried to have conversations with her about this, and she admitted that she didn't believe Jordan was a bad mom, per se. She just believed she could raise her much better. They've already spent thousands in lawyer fees to try and get full custody. Currently, they have visitation. I don't know what to do anymore. At first, I was on Ella's side, but over time, I've realized how irrational and unhealthy this is, and I don't know how to help or what to do. I don't want to end a 10-year friendship over this, but I truly feel like I'm at my wit's end. Any insight is appreciated. First of all, what has your First of all, what has your BFF's husband done to only get visitation? Secondly, I wonder if maybe the husband is brainwashing your best friend to believe this. Doesn't make it better, but it does change things a bit, you know? How does she react if you play the devil's advocate? He never wanted anything more than that. They broke up soon after Ava was born and just didn't bother trying to get joint custody or anything more until Ella came into the picture. I wouldn't doubt that he's telling her these things. He's told her before that he never did anything wrong to Jordan and that she's just a bad person but doesn't back it up with much other than typical issues new parents have. She doesn't seem to care if I play devil's advocate. She just keeps complaining. Your friend is trying to steal a child from her mother. That is straight up evil. I don't think I could maintain this friendship.